Hi everybody, it's Casey Williams. I have to admit that I didn't have a very high opinion of the Nissan LEAF. I drove the first generation model about a decade ago, and that very first one was kind of tall, wobbly, and only had about a 75 mile range, and it was a little bit expensive. I wasn't very impressed. And when the second generation debuted not long ago, it didn't have a range a whole lot better, and the price was not that much better either. So you know, when somebody offers an opportunity to drive the Nissan LEAF, I'm like, eh, all right, if you want to send it to me. But after a week in the current Nissan LEAF, experiencing all that it offers, the size of the interior, and its extended range, I have to admit that I was a little bit wrong. Let's go have a look at the 2023 Nissan LEAF. The LEAF has always had a distinctive appearance, and this one does too, even though some of the styling cues tied a little more directly to other Nissan products. It really starts with the front. There's no grill, it's just a flat panel, so you know it's an EV, but it kind of has the form of Nissan's V-Motion grill. Above that, this is where you plug in, there's a door that pops up, you do your charging here. LED headlamps, LED driving lamps. So it looks you know, very futuristic, very cool in the front. Come around the side, you know, my, my 20 year old nephew, my 18 year old nephew, the first thing they said is I really like the wheels, the black wheels, 18 inch. I think it looks really good on this car. And the rest of the design, it looks more crossover than, you know, than an electric car does. It looks more like, you know, it would be a compact Nissan Rogue perhaps. But I really like the design, it works well. You know, the broken, the broken pillar back here and the floating roof kind of ties it to other Nissan products. Come around the back, same with the boomerang effect here on the tail lamps. Again, ties it to other Nissan products and the black panel cross. Really kind of focusing on the fact that it is an EV. So I think it's done a nice job of making it look modern, making it look futuristic, making it look special, but also still kind of having a family resemblance. One of the things I do like about it too, there's actually quite a bit of cargo space in the back. It's deep, it's easy to get things in here, the back seats do fold down. So again, for a car that's really not that big of a car, you wouldn't think it's that big of a car, there's quite a bit of usable space inside of it. The Leafs interior was always one of the strong suits, and that really carries over to this current generation. I really have found myself being pleasantly surprised what I like about the interior and how much nicer it really is. You know, there's, you start tapping around, there's all hard plastic, but this is an entry level car. It's a roomy entry level car, but it's still an entry level car. And that's fine, I accept that in this car. I like the leather wrap steering wheel, the flat bottom with the blue stitching, pretty sporty, pretty cool. Looks like, it, looks like it could have come out of a center or one of the other sportier Nissans. There's plenty of space in here. The interior is you know, really kind of like compact crossover size. It's very tall. You can get four people very comfortably, like I said, and all the luggage. So it's a very usable car on a day-to-day -day basis, even though it has a pretty small footprint on the outside. The touchscreen, again, it's not, the features aren't the easiest to use. They're not the most advanced, but it all works you know, really well. It's reliable and it's very easy to figure out. Touchscreen, you got volume tuning, very easy to use that. Um, audio system sounds pretty good. Nice, nice speakers in the doors, a nice thumping bass. Has navigation built in, automatic climate control. You also got heated seats. And I like, I really like their center console. So you got storage here, you got cup holders here. The shifter's really cool. You just move it over and down for drive, down for fee for park. And this is, it's, it's really cool, but it works pretty effectively in this car. Here's the one pedal driving. We'll talk about that when we get on the road in just a minute. The econ button here as well. Again, the instrument cluster, there are a lot more advanced instrument clusters than this one, but I think a lot of people will appreciate that there is an analog speedometer. Over on the side, we've got the, the range meter, also how we're using power. Um, you can modify this, and you can, you can put a speedometer over here, you can put other things over here as well, navigation. So you can adjust that left section how you want to. But on the right side, there's always the analog speedometer. No heads-up display, doesn't really need it. Um, this car does have a lot of safety gear for a vehicle like this. So it has adaptive cruise, automatic emergency braking, lane keep assist, blind spot warning, rear cross path detection with auto brake, and it also has lane centering steering. So you can get on the highway, set the adaptive cruise, it'll maintain the speed and allowing for cars in front of you, and then it will also, you have to keep your hands on the wheel, but it will also steer the car. So pretty, pretty good layout on the interior, pretty comfortable. Um, this one has lower lumbar support, which I think is really good. Um, looks nice and, and works really well. We expect electric cars to work really well in the city. And this one does. You know, there's plenty of power. It's got 214 horsepower, got 212 miles total range. So I think that's really good, especially when I tell you the price of it. I think it's very fair. This does have the one pedal driving. So when I press this button, it'll let the throttle go normal, you know, forward normal for acceleration. But when you let off, it goes immediately into regenerative braking. So it's recuperating that energy, you know, off of off of the momentum. And I think it's really cool. Um, and a lot of traffic in the city, you really can just drive with one pedal. You just lift off and it'll, here I'm doing right now, it'll slow down and come to a complete stop. So I think that's really cool. Most people like that in electric cars, and it works very well here. 
Um, but like I said, I, I like the shifter. I like how it works. It's smooth. The handling, again, it's an entry-level car. It feels kind of like you'd expect a Sentra or Versa to drive like. It's kind of that size and that feel. The suspension's firm, but, but, but it's not shocking. It works out really well. Um, over the weekend, decided to get on the highway, go see my parents for, for the Easter holidays. Um, got on the highway, drove about 120 miles in it. And it was really nice to have enough range to not really have to worry about range. You know, if you're on the, again, around the highway and you're going something above the speed limit, you're going to reduce that range a lot quicker than you would in a town or, or driving at the speed limit. Um, but still, getting, getting 120 miles on the road was, we had plenty of capacity left when I got home, pulled it in the driveway, plugged it in, and everything was good. But I just like it. I mean, it's, it's a typical electric car. It's, it's smooth. It's quiet. It has a funny little noise under 25 miles per hour so people can hear it because there's no engine noise. People, people can hear it from the outside. Pedestrians can hear it. Um, but I think it's just a really nice little car. Cabin on. Start okay. So one of the downsides of the Leaf is its charging time. Again, this isn't the most current generation. And I could also point to the Chevy Bolt being in this class where the cars are very pleasant, the cars are very nice, the price really well. Charging time isn't quite as fast. If you really want to get this car and drive it on the highway, drive it long distances, it might not be your first choice. So if you charge it at home or on a 240 volt charger at work, it's going to take you about 11 hours to fully charge this car. If you can find a DC fast charger, you're looking at about 45 minutes. Um, if you look at some of the faster cars in the market, they can get from like 10 to 80% range in about 20 minutes. So it's a little on the long side, but I, I think that most people aren't getting this kind of a car out on the highway, driving long distance. It's a second car. Um, they probably have a gas-powered crossover too. So if you're plugging at home every day, you've got 212 miles range. You've got plenty to, to get where you need to be. Okay. So let's talk about price. This one with everything on it, kind of loaded out, $36,895. But the LEAF starts right around $28,000, minus $7,500 federal credit, and you're looking at a vehicle that can go 212 miles, plugged in, looking at about $20,500 base price for this vehicle. That is an incredibly affordable car for what you get. Well, next week, another fun car. Until then, storm forward.